North Africa and Human Geography Part 1. Okay, so just a quick recap. We've already discussed the physical geography, the physical features of North Africa, the Middle East. And just as a quick recap, um, let's take a quick look at this globe, at the illustration. Everywhere in green, these are the areas that we'll be focusing on. Okay, so this is uh, North Africa, the Arabian Peninsula, what we call the Middle East. The primary ethnic groups in this region are the Arabs, uh, Israelis, the Iranians, the Afghans, Caucasians, uh, Turks, and Kurds. When we get into a little bit further into the physical geography, that brings us into some more questions about this area. Primarily, um, which group makes up the majority of this population? And that answer would be um, actually the, the Arabs. This area of the world is heavily influenced by Islam, hence the picture. So this area of the world, um, North, North Africa, the Middle East, very heavily influenced by Islam. The primary religion of, the, of, this, um, of this part of the world is Islam, and the region's primary language is Arabic. So that brings us to our next concept that we'll discuss. And taking a look at this globe, it'll kind of bring you, tell you guys what it is that we're looking at. If you remember this from earlier in the semester, or earlier, I'm sorry, first semester, this, um, taking a look, this, these pictures represent the major cultural hearths in the world. So taking a look at the globe, the major or the primary or secondary cultural hearths. And remember, if you remember, the cultural hearths are just early centers of civilization. Also, these were early civilizations that influenced other civilizations around them. And let's kind of really quickly review that. We have the Mesoamerican cultural hearths. We have the West African cultural hearth, um, the Nile Valley, Mesopotamia, and we will be focusing on these two today. Um, the Indus River Valley cultural hearth and the Yellow River Valley cultural hearth. So and that kind of answers the question of what do these red areas represent? They represent the world's cultural hearths, which were the er world's early centers of influence. And once again, this is a review from the first nine weeks or the first semester is and what are the three physical characteristics that are necessary for a cultural hearth to begin? And this is a review. So if you want to test yourself before going forward, that's fine. Um, but we discussed three physical characteristics. What is it that these three areas having? I'm sorry. What is it? What character? What three characteristics do all of these areas have in common? Here they are mild climates, fertile soil, and access to major waterways. And I'll explain it very briefly. When you think about early man, you think about primitive man. Um, before this time, people were hunters and gatherers. That meant that uh, pe primarily people did not set up um, cities or civilizations. They didn't stay in one place long, long. They just moved with the seasons, and they went as their food sources. So as herds moved around, so did early people. So the early cultural hearths are when you start seeing people setting up cities and civilizations for a long period of time or people set up cities and civilizations, what things were necessary for that to occur? Well, one, it had to be a nice climate. So because if you think about it, if you're early man and you're, your job is to and you're following around, um, you're following your food around the continent or, or livestock or you're following it around the continent, wherever your food goes. The one thing when you decide to settle, you want to settle somewhere where the weather's nice. You also want to settle somewhere um, where the f soil is fertile, which means that you can grow crops, that you can sustain yourself and not just live off of animals or what you are hunting. Also, you need to have access to a major waterway. There are a few reasons for this. One reason is because, of course, for trade opportunities, the opportunities, um, to develop your economy through trade, working with other country, working with other civilizations or other people. And if you remember, when we we're talking about three, four, five thousand years ago, early man did not have boats. They did not. I'm sorry. They did not have. Um, they were just getting used to boats. Boats were the primary mode of transportation. 
did not have a lot of roads, did not have cars, did not have all those things. So the most efficient ways of transportation were water. So going up and down rivers. So that's why you see a lot of early cultural herds on water. Early large cities are located near bodies of water. That was the most efficient means of transportation, probably up until the past 400 years, maybe three, 400 years. Also, oftentimes where there's water, a lot of times major bodies of water, um, either they participate or they have a role in making of making the soil in that area fertile, either in the now river valley where the, the, the major bodies of water over flood once or twice a year, they over flood, thereby replenishing the soil, or which we also see in the now river valley in Mesopotamia, where the farmers in that area early man um, had access to water in order to create the first irrigation projects, which meant that they were able to bring water from these waterways to their crops and were able to consistently grow crops and to support the civilizations. And just moving to the next concept of reviewing what a cultural hearth is, um, these were once again the early centers of civilization whose ideals and practices spread to the surrounding areas. The two cultural hearths that we will spend time on today are the Mesopotamian culture hearth, which is right here. Um, that's, that is in present day Iraq. And the Nile River cultural hearth, which occurs right here in present day Egypt and Sudan. Now this brings us to this illustration, which is, or this map, which is actually a map of the trade routes of the ancient world. When we're talking about the trade routes of ancient man, the early world, um, these things influence the culture hearths. And this region that we're studying today, the Nile River Valley, the Mesopotamia Valley, they're known as the crossroads of civilization because throughout early man's history, groups have traveled throughout this region to trade. And what we're looking at now with this picture is, is of the trade route that is called the Silk Route. And what the Silk Route is, was were early trade routes uh, connecting Europe, Africa, and Asia. So we'll take a quick look at this. Europe, these were the early trade routes between Europe, Africa, and Southeast Asia. So in this kind of, and what this picture does, it shows how people from Europe illustrates the, the trade routes from Africa, Egypt, um, the Middle East to Asia. What that did in this area is that you had a tremendous amount of cultural diffusion, a tremendous amount of mixing of people, a different mixing of economies, of languages, of religion, of ways of doing things, which is also part of the reason if you look, if you notice, You'll see a lot of the four of the world's um, four of the six major cultural hearths are in follow along the Silk River or the Silk Road. Egypt, Mesopotamia, Indus River Valley, Yellow River Valley. So what impact has this had on the population of primarily this region that we're studying today? the region of North Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. Um, what is, what impact has this had on the population of the region? Ethnic diversity, and I mentioned it earlier. So the way is, um, the primary impact is ethnic diversity, cultural diversity, and ethnicity is not just race, but if you take a look at these is uh, ethnic diversity as far as religion, as far as skin color, um, as far as food, as far as um, sports that people play, a tremendous amount of diversity in this region because throughout history or for a very long time, there's been a tremendous amount of mixture from everywhere in this light. So everywhere that you see lit up. So from Central Africa until China until Southeast Asia, tremendous amount of mixture. So what we see in this area that we're studying is a tremendous amount of ethnic diversity, which is represented um, by this, by the people here. And so what you'll see is the people in this area go anywhere from the lightest of shades to the darkest of dark and everywhere in between. 
So that brings us to the next concept that we'll be covering, which is the Mesopotamian culture hearth. The Mesopotamian culture hearth is right here where this circle is. Okay, so that is right in the present day in Syria and Iraq. It's located right here between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Um, the name itself, the name Mesopotamia itself means land between the rivers and some of the early civilizations that are included in the Mesopotamian culture hearth. Because when we say a culture hearth, that is not necessary. That is not one civilization. It's a lot of civilizations over a period of time that have influenced other civilizations in that area. But they all are in this area and it's over a long period of time. So some of the civilizations in this area are um, included in this culture hearth are the Sumerians, Akkadians, Babylonians, and Assyrians. Now when we talk about the contributions that these um, civilizations have made to the cultures of not only this area, but uh, to the cultures of this region of the world, also to the world at large. Okay, So when we talk about, so these are some of the contributions that they've made. Um, the Mesopotamian civilization and the Nile River Valley have often they're considered to be the cradle of the civilization of Western of the Western world. So when we talk about um, the Western part of the world, the Western Hemisphere, Africa, um, Europe, it is considered to be the cradle of civilization for for this part of the world. The first civilization to develop um, writing is the Sumerian civilization, and this is a part of the Mesopotamian culture hearth. The Mesopotamian culture hearth is also, the civilizations of that culture hearth are also responsible for developing um, things that we have today. The 60 minute hour, the 24 hour day, and you got um, the 360 degree circle. Those concepts which we are still using today. This is actually, this graphic is a form, is a picture of the first of the Sumerian form of writing which is called cuneiform. So it's a little different. It's a lot different than what we have today, but this is actually the first form of writing. This is what the first recorded history that we know of of writing. The first human writing is here. The second, some more contributions of the Mesopotamian culture hearth are represented um, by this illustration here, which is actually the Sumerian calendar. And the Sumerian calendar is what we use these concepts today. They're based on the seven-day week. Um, the Babylonians of this culture hearth and the Egyptians of the Nile River Valley culture hearth, they were the first cultures to introduce the concepts of modern medicine. And what we mean with that is that there is actually you diagnose medicine um, and you, based on your diagnosis, you make prescriptions in a scientific way. You make prescriptions um, based on your diagnosis. The Sumerians, the Sumerian civilization also had the first large scale system of loans and credit. And also in the Mesopotamian culture, her, the, the Babylonians, the Babylonians developed the earliest system of commercial banking. So we're talking about thousands of years ago. These people had these civilizations had concepts that we still have going today. Banking, which is um, banking, loans and credit and commercial banking is when you loan people money to build large things like homes or building homes buildings downtown development those kinds of areas and also from this mesopotamian culture hearth is the first um the mesopotamian culture hearth because of large part because they're the ones who create writing were the first they created the first law codes that were drawn from legal precedent so the first law codes that were drawn from legal precedent which means that the law is based on the previous rulings of kings and judges before um, these, this was made by the, this was made in the Mesopotamian culture hearth. Uh, the most famous is Hammurabi's code, which is actually represented in this picture. So this illustration at the bottom is currently, um, is one of the, the early codes of laws called Hammurabi's code. It's actually probably the most famous early man code of law. So Hammurabi's code, and this was developed during the Mesopotamian culture hearth. That brings us to the Nile River Valley cultural hearth. And once again, when we're discussing the Nile River Valley, we mean the area is going from the Nile River from Egypt to the Sudan. So in current day, um, represented by this circle in current day Egypt and Sudan. So it's located along these lines. Some of the civilizations included um, here are the civilizations of Egypt and Nubia. And the Nubian 
civilization is actually believed to have contributed the first large-scale monarchy. So when we look at the first large-scale monarchy, this is important because this is the first large-scale government in human history is believed to have come from the Nile River Valley and then the um, Nubian civilization. So this picture is actually a representation of a um, Nubia and, and Egypt, very similar culturally because they were right next to one another. This is picture represents one of the Nubian monarchy, um, a Nubian pharaoh. So it's not the first Nubian pharaoh, but it's one of the other. It's one of the um, later Nubian pharaohs, which is Nubian monarchy, which is represented by this illustration. Some of the other contributions made by this culture hearth are um, geometry, early geometry and surveying methods. Um, the Nile River Valley culture hearth is they've created things that we still have a lot hard time creating today two, three, four thousand years later as far as construction wise. They were the first human civilization that we know of now um, to use early to use geometry and surveying methods in their building. The Egyptians, they created papyrus, which is an, which is the world's first known paper. This picture is actually a representation of um, this is actually papyrus. So in these these is the hieroglyphics, which is the Egyptian form of writing on this papyrus. Uh, inventions. The, culture, the Nile River Valley culture hearth is responsible for inventions that we use every day. Well, definitely the pulley, which is represented in this picture, uh, the sundial and water clock. They also, with the Nile River Valley um, culture hearth, the Egyptians, along with the Babylonians, once again, they created the first practical and effective system of diagnostic medicine. Now, moving forward, We'll see that also contributed to this culture hearth is represented by this illustration. The first ships in human history have been credited to the Nile River Valley culture hearth of the Egyptians. So right around 3500 BCE, those are the earliest ships to have been found by man, which are represented in this picture. Um, the Nile River Valley culture hearths. Complex construction. These are some of the examples of some of the um, achievements in the Nile River Valley culture hearth, the pyramids. The Great Pyramids um, and the Obelix here, which is these are some of the construction, um, some of the ways that the, the great um, that the Nile River Valley culture earth has contributed to construction and engineering. Now, please remember, highlight your homework learning targets. Also answer the questions in bold lettering. The end. See you in class. Have a good evening.